hello and welcome back to this house of walls today we are going to be talking all things summer learning so as always pull up your favorite drink and let's chat <laughs> So as well as having my very light cup of coffee, I have my planner for this school year and our next school year. We year-round homeschool, which is fantastic. We do tend to take about four weeks off during the middle of summer, and that's usually when we have like a vacation or something like that. And I find four weeks is perfect. It gives us Plenty of days for downtime where there is zero structure, and that's fantastic. It gives us days for lots of outings, or it gives us days where it's hot, we're tired of downtime, and we can sit down with some summer work and just kind of do that. It's very loosely based, uh, which works well for our family. I had found in the past that if we took longer than four weeks, uh, it just didn't work well for our family. We need a little bit more structure, but it's also nice to have some downtime. So I will try maybe right here. I'm going to put up a picture of our school calendar for this year um, and see if you can see that. So our planned last day is June 23rd, uh, which is perfect. I think that will work really well for our family. We are planning on taking off the week of Memorial Day, and so that'll be a nice little final break so that we can push through to the end of the school year. And then we pull up our calendar for next school year, so I'll try and post that here. Um, so we are planning on starting Monday, August 7th. So that actually will give us, I think, more of like five weeks off. That's fine. Like I said, we have trips planned, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and then, yeah, that'll take us through until June 21st of next year. Um, so fantastic. Now, we are going to be finishing up a bunch of our curriculum here in the next couple of weeks, and that is great. I am so excited. The kids are excited as we are getting closer to the end of some of their curriculum. But I still do like to have some things planned for summer. I have learned over the years not to over plan. Um, I tend to do that a lot. So this year, I'm really trying to keep it down to reading, a little bit of creative writing, um, math, and a little bit of growth mindset because I figure that's always something that we could kind of work on and build on. As for our group things, we are going to continue read alouds. We always have a read aloud book going. We are reading, I'll put a picture of it here. This is what we're reading right now. It has been a slow read. Um, really not through the book's fault at all, more my fault. That's okay though, the kids are enjoying it, we are going to get through it. And then I think, I'm not sure which one we're going to pick up first. Um, I really want to read The Secret Garden. 1990s adaption of this movie was my absolute favorite movie as a little girl. Uh, my parents even made me a secret garden at one point. It was fantastic. So I really want to share this with my boys. I have read it once or twice through. And I actually, on the other wall, my mom quite a few years ago got me a print. Um, and maybe I'll put that picture up here. And it is little itty bitty words from a passage from The Secret Garden. So this is definitely something that I want to share with my boys uh, and I think it would be kind of fun to do. Now, the past few years, we have always finished out our school year with reading a book from E.B. White. We have done The Trumpet of the Swan and we have done Charlotte's Web. We really enjoy them, which is 
interesting because as a kid, I did not enjoy those books. I actually really disliked them, but they are turning out to be some of our favorite read alouds and that's fantastic. So next on the list, we have Stuart Little. Uh, we love the movie of it. And so I'm excited to read this with the boys. It's a nice short book. So we might end out our school year with this, depending on how long it takes us to finish the Rover book that we are reading and then get into The Secret Garden. We'll see. And then our last for kind of a read aloud is something a little bit more fun. At the end of our school year, we are going to be finishing out our History Quest uh, Middle Times with Elizabethan Times. And so I thought it would be really fun to pick up this um, book. It is a stage full of Shakespeare stories and they are 12 tales. We have done maybe one or two of these. We haven't really done a whole lot, but I thought this would be a kind of a fun thing. I love these books and they are all retellings to make sense for little kids so that they can at least understand the main premise of Shakespeare's stories and plays and everything like that. So I'm excited to pick this up and go through some of these with the boys. All right, our last kind of family subject is going to be Spanish. Um, we are kind of loosely going through and reviewing Song School Spanish as we dropped it off at the beginning of the school year and never picked it back up. So we do have Song School Spanish we are reviewing. We have already started that. I would like to continue. Luckily, there are all kinds of review pages at the back of the book. And so that is what we are using as well as the little flashcards that come with this to review everything that we have learned so far. Luckily, they are picking it back up really quickly. And so we are going to continue with this during the summer and then continue during the new school year. Let's talk about my 12 year old. He is going to be a rising seventh grader. If you are interested in what we are going to be using for his curriculum, I will link that above. So we went through our books and he is going to pick up, I am so excited for him to pick this up, The Mysterious Benedict Society. It is a bigger book. I think that he can totally do it. Um, we did watch the series and we actually just learned this past week that they are not going to be continuing on with the series and we were very sad about that. We really liked the series. But he is excited to pick this up and read it and see what um, kind of how it compares to the show. So he will be reading this. For his growth mindset, I have two things that we have kind of sporadically done throughout our school year. And so we'll put more focus into it this summer and finish it up. So we do have a big life journal. He, he likes it. Um, I would like to finish it though. I think it has some good tools just for growth mindset and how to deal with frustration and things like that. We also have Evan Moore Heart and Mind. This one we tend to pick up more easily. It's easier to take in the car with us and do anything like that. Um, he, he's done quite a few activities in here, but I would like him to continue on this summer. As for writing, we will be putting our formal curriculum down, even though we will not be finishing IEW structure and style. Mm, is it one, one B is the name of that level. <laughs> um, that's fine. We're going to set it aside and not worry about it during our summer break, but I would like him to do a little bit of creative writing. And so this is a book that he has done some this year. Uh, if he still has some prompts left in here, we will carry it over into next year. And it is just Creative Writing Journal by Intentional Homeschooling. He really likes these prompts. Sometimes they're as easy as make a list about such and such. Um, and then he, yeah, creative writing is his jam. He loves to come up with silly stories and how grotesque he can make things or anything like that. So we will definitely be continuing with that this. And then for math, honestly, for our current school year, we have put aside formal math curriculum for right now. We are really nailing down some key math elements. 
And so I have pulled these workbooks out. We have them and they are great. So we do have 100 days of multiplication. It starts with easier multiplication and continues on to a little bit more. And then same thing with 100 days of long division. And then he has just this grade five math skills. And again, just to nail down some key concepts before we get into formal curriculum again for seventh grade. All right, now let's talk my rising third grader. Again, if you are interested in seeing what we are going to be using for his third grade curriculum, I will link that video above. So for reading, I have a stack of books. Um, these are all kind of like beginner readers. He is pretty much beyond these, but we have them and so it would be kind of fun to finish them up. So we do have a, um, a book about the moonwalk. We have a magic school bus takes a moonwalk. So again, I think I found these in a free little library, both of them. And I wanted him to read them around the time at the beginning of the school year when we were learning about space. And he just didn't have an interest. So I'm hoping that he will maybe show an interest for the summer. If not, I'll put them back into a free little library. And then I really want him to finish up Frog and Toad. He has read two of the four Frog and Toad books. And so he still has um, Days with Frog and Toad and Frog and Toad all year. Again, he is beyond these levels of reading, but they're such good stories. And I think it would be kind of a nice lighthearted summer read. And then if he is wanting something a little bit more in his reading, I do have Zoe and Sassafras. I think this is the first in the series. Yeah. So this is Dragons and Marshmallows. I found this in a free little library. He loves animals. He loves fantasy. He loves science. I think that he will really enjoy the series. And then just for another one, I have My Father's Dragon. That would just be a good beginner chapter book if you wanted to pick up a chapter book. And then for growth mindset, very much so like his brother, he has his big life journal. We have not gone through a lot of it, maybe about half of it. Uh, so I would like to continue and finish this. And then he also has a heart and mind book by Evan Moore. Again, this one is easier to pick up and kind of take on the road or anything like that. So continue working through that. Now for writing, I'm not exactly sure everything that I'm going to be offering him. I do know we are going to continue with these little cards. Um, the, so this is write a sentence about, and it has three little pictures. He verbally tells me the sentence and then he writes the sentence down. Um, he is really enjoying this. This is from, I will try to link it below, but it is from Tales from Miss D. And this is from Teachers Pay Teachers. So I just printed them, laminated them, and put them on a binder clip. I'm not quite sure what else we will use for writing. We might just use that. Writing is not his favorite thing to do. And so maybe that will be enough. And then for math, I will try to put a picture up here. I just ordered from Amazon just this little review math workbook. He is loving math. We are using math with confidence. We will finish that before the end of the year. And then we luckily will be getting grade three right before our school year starts. So that'll be great. Um, so I just want him to kind of keep those wonderful skills that he has learned this year so that he is ready for third grade. That is what we have planned for this summer. It's such a wonderful time, um, but also, you know, it's good to kind of keep a routine going. My kids thrive on routine, so that's something that I definitely want to offer them. But we also really love having some downtime and maybe days with just too much technology, and that's fantastic too. So I like to have these options just to have them if we have a day that we say, hey, let's pick up some work and do it. As always, if you like these types of videos, be sure to subscribe and like below, and I will be back for more videos soon.